standing next to one of the brothers of Philadelphia. We, we're gonna talk to him a little bit and get some information from him. Oh, my brother, can you tell me a little bit about Philly? Oh man, Philly is awesome, man. This is the place where I first got saved at. And it's just an awesome church. It's, I don't really see, like no church is doing it like this church. I got you, I got you. So what do y'all have going on during the week? Do y'all have anything going on during the week? Well, during the week, man, we got uh, noonday prayer from Monday through Friday. It's at 12.15. You can come out on your lunch break. If you got a lunch break, you can come check that out. Uh, also, we got Tuesday night Bible study. It's at 7 p.m. And Thursday night, we got school of prayer. You can come and you can worship. You can pray with the saints and just really connect with God in, in a deeper way, deeper way. I got you. I got you. Well, look, I appreciate the time, man. And, you know, once again, Christians on the street, baby. Holla! This week is family week, so there will be no school of prayer on Thursday. So please take the time and enjoy this time with your family. We would like to thank all those who came out to support us for the Negro Land Tour in North Carolina and also those who stood in agreement with the prayer. And here are a few pics of the event. Man, you know I'm so happy, bro. Philly got so many ministries, man. You part? What other ministries you part of? Man, I'm in the 12. I'm part of the media ministry. Um, that's about it. What about you, man? Man, the media, the missionary, PCU. Man, they got all kind of ministries here that that you get plugged in, man. We got the video ministry, we got ushers, we got the nursery. I wonder what would it be like if the men ran the nursery. Nursery, we need y'all. We need y'all. ASAP. <laughs> All right, guys, y'all done heard the announcements. We done told you to plug in. Now it's praise and worship time. Everybody stand up to your feet and let's praise and worship. It's worship time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's good to see y'all on tonight. Y'all look so wonderful. Go <laughs> ahead. Go ahead. Praise God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this very moment, oh God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that your name is glorious. Father, we come to worship you and to give you praise. There's none like you in all the earth. Father, I pray that you would move in such a mighty way on tonight, that you would break chains, that you would destroy the yokes, that you would heal, save, sanctify, and deliver. Be God in this place, oh God. Have your way. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Turn to your neighbor and give him a hug. Say, the Lord makes me happy. Hallelujah. We come to worship God on tonight, amen? Hey! You make me happy. You make me whole. You take the pain away. So in love with you. You make me happy, you make me whole, you take the pain away, I'm so in love with you. Come on, you say, you make me happy, say you make me whole, you make me 
You take the pain away. You take the pain I'm away. so in love with I'm you. So in love with you. Sing it again, say. You make me happy. Can you make me whole? You take the pain away. I'm so in love with you. And everything about you. Everything about you is right. It covers all my wrongs. All I say. All I say. My life. I'm so glad to say. Everything about you is right. Covers on my own. Covers on my own. All right, all right, save my life. All right, save my life. You, you is where I belong. I belong to you, Lord. I belong to you, Lord. I belong to you, yeah. Hey, you make me happy. You make me happy. You make me whole. You make me whole. You take the pain away. You Take your pain I'm so away. in love. I'm so in love with you. Sing it again. You make me happy. You make me whole. You take the, the pain. pain away. I'm so in love. I'm so in love with you. Everything about you. Everything about you is right. Covers on my wrong. Covers on my wrong. Right. 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 Save my life. Heart, you glad that he saved you all tonight. Everything about you. Everything about you is right. Covers on my wrong. Covers on my wrong. Your life saved me. Your life saved my life. You is where I belong. Everything. Everything about you is right. Covers on my wrong. Covers on my wrong. Your life saved me. Your life saved my life. You is where I belong. You is where I belong.
power, majesty and kingdom, God of truth and Lord of mercy, sovereign, sovereign, counselor, only wise God, risen Savior, mighty champion. We're going to sing it again and say, you are holy. You are holy. You are worthy. Majesty and King. You are God of truth and Lord of mercy. Sovereign. Sovereign. Counselor. Only wise God. Risen Savior. Mighty. Champion, champion, come on, say you are holy, you are holy, you are worthy, majesty and king, you are God of truth and Lord of mercy, sovereign, 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 counselor. Hallelujah. Come on, we serve an awesome God. The Bible says he's awesome and mighty in all his ways. We worship you, oh Lamb. We worship you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little love song for the Lord on tonight. Oh. Come on, God, we worship you in the beauty of holiness tonight. For you are awesome, God. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let's just begin to thank him for everything he's done. Hallelujah. Here we go. Say, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. How many of y'all grateful to be in this house tonight? 
say we thank you we thank you we thank you we thank you how many love the lord on tonight we love you we love you we love you with our whole heart and soul we love you lord we love you we love you we love you and if you know that he's worthy on tonight, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy. I don't know about you, but I come to give him glory, honor, and praise. Because you're, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy. Come on, we need you in this place tonight, God. Come on, we cry out, say, I need you. I need you, I need you. I need thee, oh, I need thee every hour. I need you. And the reason why I need you is because I am weak. You're awesome. Yes, you you're are. Awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. And awesome is your power, God. Awesome is your power, God. You're awesome. You're awesome. Come on, we're going to go back to the front and declare who he is. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, say, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. And you are worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. And we need you. We need you. We need you. We need because you're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. My God is awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're, awesome. you're an awesome God. You're, yeah. awesome. you're awesome. You're awesome. Come on, just lift this name up tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a shout. Hallelujah. Call him what you see him as. Your provider. Your redeemer. Your deliverer. Your bulwark, your strength, he is my song. Come on, he's everything I need. Hallelujah. Oh God, we magnify you and exalt your name together. Come on, let's lift him up. You're an awesome God. You're awesome, you're awesome. Where would we be? You're awesome, you're awesome, you're awesome. You're awesome, you're awesome, you're awesome. You're Hallelujah, you made a way for me. I don't know where. Yeah. You're awesome, you're awesome, you're awesome. Where would I be without you? You're awesome, you're awesome, you're awesome. Hide it for me. You're awesome, you're awesome, you're awesome. I love you, Lord. I declare it this day. You're awesome, you're awesome, you're awesome. There's no one like you in the world. You're awesome, you're awesome, you're awesome. Come on, from the fruit of your lips, just begin to bless them. Hallelujah. I dare you to lift up your hands. Lift your hands and say, Thank you, Jesus. 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 Say thank you, Jesus. 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 Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, bless the Lord from your soul. Alpha and Omega, that's no one like you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord God. Come on, let's lift up our voice. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If I had to doubt the church, not enough to say. Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Come on, let them hear you cry tonight. We worship you, Jesus. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. Oh. Come on, that should be a sound of praise in this place. When you think about his goodness and everything he's done, where will we be this, mo this evening if it wasn't for him? Come on, just bring your mind back. It starts with a memory. The Bible says, forget not his benefits. It starts with a memory, hallelujah, of something he's done for you. 
just think about his goodness some of y'all been through a lot <laughs> you don't look like what you've been through this is the time right now you magnify the law you want a word from the pastor you want a word from god this is the moment right now for you to exalt him <laughs> oh but i'm glad jesus i don't know why i don't know why you would die for a sinner like me you're perfect in majesty i don't know why but oh but i'm glad i'm glad jesus i'm glad jesus i'm glad oh Come on, no clapping, just bless his name with your mouth. Hallelujah. From the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, tap into the inside. Hallelujah. Forget about what you came in with. Hallelujah. Just call him out. Hallelujah. Just speak Jesus. Say Yahweh. Hallelujah. Out of the belly shall flow rivers. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 glory to God, I love that little part when he says, oh, but I'm glad, amen, hallelujah, oh, but I'm glad, amen, you could, you could, you could just stop the music, we don't need the music, we don't need the music, somebody say, oh, but I'm glad, I say, oh, but I'm glad. Oh, but I'm glad. Come on, Brian, show him how to say that. Oh, but I'm. Oh, but I'm glad now. Come on now. Oh, glad. Say, oh, but I'm glad. Oh, oh, but I'm glad. Say, oh, but I'm glad now. Oh, but I'm glad now. I could have been sleeping in my grave. But oh, but I'm glad. Oh, but I'm glad. Oh, but I'm glad now. Oh, but I'm glad now. I was glad just when they told me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Hey! <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey! Hallelujah. Marina, you can do that, oh, but I'm glad. Come on now, come on now, come on now. Oh, but I'm glad. Hey! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Mm. but I'm glad. What you say? <laughs> Woo! Chancy, you was glad too when they said, let us go into the house of Hey! Hey! Oh, but I'm glad. Hallelujah! Oh, but I'm glad. Come on, let's just worship. Let's just worship. Come on, move your hands. Move your hands. Come on, move your hands. Move your hands. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, but I'm glad. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on, just get captivated. Just get caught up in his presence. Just get caught up in his presence. Come on, just tell him what you're glad about. Come on, if you're glad about your health, just tell him you're glad. If you're glad about your family, just tell him you're glad. If you're glad about your children, just tell him you're glad. If you're glad you have a job, if you're, if you're glad you got clothes on your back, if you're glad you got a car to drive, if you're glad you're not in the hospital today, if you're glad you're not locked up, if you're glad, come on, tell the Lord what you're glad about. He can hear every single one of us. Come on now, what you're glad about today? What are you 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 glad about today? Has he provided for you? Has he put a meal on your table? What are you glad about today? 
Oh, but I'm glad. Oh, but I'm glad. Oh, but I'm glad. Should have been dead and gone. <laughs> Should have been dead and gone. Oh, but I'm glad. Oh, but I'm glad. Father, we are glad today, God. Glad to be in the beloved, God. Glad to be in your hands. Glad to be close to your heart. Glad to be in Christ. Glad to be forgiven. Glad to be saved, God. Glad to be, hallelujah, a saint, a child of the most high, God. Glad because we didn't deserve it, Daddy. Glad because you look over our faults and you saw our needs, Daddy. Glad that though our sins were red as scarlet, you washed them as white as snow. Glad that you took our sins and cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. Glad that you took our transgressions, God, and hey, cast them as far as the east is from the west. Glad, Lord God, hallelujah, God, that you cleanse our souls, God. We're so glad that. And that's why we spend a little time just saying thank you, Lord. Where will we be without you, Daddy? Where will we be without you? So, Father, I can remember growing up in the little house I grew up in, God. When Brian was talking about a memory, a memory, a memory. I, he took me all the way back to Alice Boucher on 132 Whitney Street in a little, little shotgun house, I do it well. And that's where you brought me up, Daddy. Little boy running barefoot in the front yard. Ain't good at nothing but getting in trouble. Oh, but I'm glad today, God. Oh, but I'm glad. Oh, but I'm glad. Come on now. Where, where was he when he found you? Huh? Do you have a memory? Do you have a memory? Huh? Can you remember the house you was in? Can you remember what you was eating? Can you remember what you didn't have? Can you remember that? Some of y'all can remember being in that hospital. Some of y'all can remember hard times. Some of you can remember mama and daddy fussing and fighting. Some of y'all can remember daddy drunk and hitting on mama. Some of y'all can remember mama on drugs, daddy on drugs. Some of y'all can remember, amen, going to the jail to visit daddy or visit mama. Oh, but I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad today. Hallelujah. That trouble don't last always. That my God came in right on time, delivered, blessed, saved, and gave abundant life. And Father, we just come to say thank you tonight. And we lift your name on high. You said if you be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. So draw people to you tonight, Daddy. We pray for the souls of men to be saved and converted, God. We don't want to be the only ones with memories of what it was like before you came into our lives. We want everybody to know, Lord God, you in that intimate way. So God, touch somebody tonight. Save somebody. Sanctify them, God. Give them a reason to be glad tonight. Next time we come and sing, Lord, let them be, remember, hey, God, and give them something to sing about, Daddy. So we pray that you have your way. Bind the enemy out of this place and loose your anointing in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God some glory. Give him glory. I'm glad. I'm glad. Come on, tell somebody I didn't deserve it. But he did it anyway. <laughs> Oh, but I'm glad I, I didn't deserve it, Joseph. But he did it anyway. <laughs> Love you too, brother. Y'all such a blessing. I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. But he did it anyway, Misha. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I didn't deserve it. But he did it anyway. And I'm so glad he did it. I'm so glad. Oh, but I'm glad. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I didn't deserve it, but he did it anyway. Well, God is good. God is good, saints. Hallelujah. Yeah, man, I don't know what happened. I, I woke up with my voice right, and it was good. 
And then as the day progressed, my voice just kind of got raspy on me. So y'all be in prayer for me, amen, that the Spirit of the Lord come upon me and we're able to do what we got to do. Hallelujah. That no weapon formed against us prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us be condemned. So saints, we just want to welcome you to Philadelphia Christian Church Bible Study Tuesday night. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. We're going to be coming out of 2 Samuel chapter 15, starting at about, about verse 30 reading. I want to welcome all of our visitors and all those who may be tuning in via live stream on the internet. Amen. Um, while we get to where we're going to be in the text, just a couple of announcements. Um, <clears throat> it is family week, saints, and so we shouldn't have too many meetings. Uh, Thursday prayer will be postponed till next week. <clears throat> and so uh, enjoy your family. Um, <clears throat> one of the things you can do on family week, uh, our men's basketball team just made the playoff. No, no, no. What'd you say, Ronnie P? Yeah, they, they made their playoffs. They won in the playoffs. Now they're in the championship game this Thursday. Boy, you can't keep a Hebrew down. And so that championship game is going to be held at the Como Center behind Our Lady of Lourdes. And Ronnie P put, put, go Philly in Jesus' name. All right. So the game is 7.30 Thursday night at the Como Center behind Our Lady of Lords, the new Our Lady of Lords, and go Philly in Jesus' name. Come on, give God some praise for that. Amen? All right. Love, we got anything else? All right. Well, let's just go ahead and jump into scriptures. Amen? And like I said, y'all just be praying for my voice. Um, but we're in 2 Samuel 15. We're going to start at about verse 30. <clears throat> and... Uh, Let's go ahead and read a little bit so we can get up in this word. <clears throat> the Bible says, and David went up by the ascent of Mount Olivet and wept as he went <clears throat> and had his head covered. And he went barefoot and all the people that was with him covered every man his head and they went up, weeping as they went up. And one told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators, conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. And it came to pass that when David was come to the top of the mount where he worshipped God, behold, Hushai, somebody say Hushai. Hushai the archite came to meet him with his coat rent, and earth was upon his head. Unto whom David said, if thou passest on with me, then thou shalt be a burden unto me. Somebody say a burden. a burden. But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant, he'd hear to. So will I now also be thy servant, that thou, um, uh, then mayest thou for me defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. <clears throat> And hast thou not there with thee Zadok and Abiathar, the priests? Therefore it shall be that what thing soever thou shalt hear of the king's house, thou shalt tell it to Zadok and Abiathar, to the priests. Father, we pray you had a blessing to the reading, the hearing, the exposition of your most holy word. <clears throat> pray you be with me. You give me strength in my voice, O king, that not one single word of yours fall to the ground. I pray in my weakness that you would be thou strong, O king. We pray that your people would hear your voice with clarity, God. Send out the clarion call, Father, for your Hebrews and your Gentiles alike. Save, deliver, and bless. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, give God some glory. All right, saints. Glory. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Mama. All right. So, um, saints, last week, or last time I was up here, I think that was last week, um, we talked about David's flight from Jerusalem. Remember, a messenger came and told David that all of Israel was with Absalom. So David leaves the royal city. He leaves Jerusalem, not one to subject the city to war, 
uh, siege warfare especially. Uh, they would have surrounded the city, cut off food. A lot of people would have died and a lot of buildings would have been destroyed. So David just says, listen, I'm going to go ahead and go. We talked about that as David fled, um, the people of God, the Hebrews, kind of forsook David. But a Gentile by the name of Ittai, amen, said that he would remain by David's side. He was kind of like a Ruth to David. Whether thou goest, I will go. Whether you stay, I will stay. Where you die, I'm going to die, and that's where I'm going to be buried. That was Ittai's heart. We talked about Ittai. We talked about Zadok, how Zadok was a friend of David who wanted to be near David, but David needed him someplace else. And so he was of an obedient, submissive heart. Though wanting to be with David, amen, understood and obeyed David, amen, and was where David needed him more than he was where he wanted to be. God, give us a heart like Zadok tonight. Hallelujah. We talked about the Brook Kedron, a challenging place, a place of trouble, a place of struggle, a place of judgment, a, bla a, a place of chastisement, <clears throat> and a place of cleansing. So we touched upon the Kidron Valley. <clears throat> then we noticed last week that David did five things, y'all. Somebody say five things. Five. five things that even though he was going through struggle and trials and heartache, he did five things that touched the very heart of God. Number one, David wept. That means that he was sorry for what he did and he was going through great sorrow. Number two, David covered his head, which kind of exemplified the shame for his actions and all that he was going through. Number three, David went barefoot. And this meant that David was operating in humility as God was chastening him. Number four, David prayed, which was David declaring his dependence upon the most high God, even though it was the same God who was chastening him and putting him through hell. David was still in communication with that God. And lastly, David worshiped. Even though David was in a night season in his life, like the nightingale, amen, one of the only birds that sing at night, David got on the top of the hill of Olivet and he began to lift up the name of the Most High God. And all of those things, those five things, amen, if you do them individually alone, alone they will touch the Lord's heart. Worship alone will move the Lord. Prayer alone will move the Lord. Your tears alone will move the Lord. Your shame for your sin alone will move the Lord. Your humility alone, instead of being proud while you go through, your humility alone will move the Lord. Here we have David giving God all five at one time. At one time. And it touches God in a special way, in a very deep way. And we're going to see the manifestation of that tonight. We'll pick up at about verse 32. We'll have two or three points tonight, depending on time. I'm thinking we may just get, get to two of them. However, if we have to go to three, I'm ready. So let's look at the first point. Behold Hushai. Somebody say, Behold Hushai. Here it is in verse 32. And it came to pass that when David was come to the top of the mount where he worshiped God, behold, Hushai, the archite, came to meet him with his coat rent and earth upon his head. Listen, after David weeps to the Lord, covers his head in shame, after he humbles himself, after he goes about barefoot, after he prays unto the Lord and then worships the Most High, the Bible says, Behold. Somebody say behold. behold. The word behold means to open your eyes because something spectacular had just happened. All right? It means to watch. It means to observe. You know what I'm saying? And, and you don't just say behold for anything. You know what I'm saying? Behold the Lamb of God. You know what I'm saying? Behold the man. It's something that you want to get people's attention. And so the writer of 2 Samuel, after David worship, he says, Behold. Hushai. It's a very important thing. It's a very important thing. Hushai showing up at this point is a God thing. It's a divine thing. 
You know, it was like God up there while David is doing his five. Hallelujah. Uh, God attention getters. God is up there saying, I can't take it no more. Uh, I know I'm judging him, but he's doing everything right. I know that I'm hurting him, but he's not mad at me. He loving on me and worshiping me. I know, amen, I got him in the valley, but there he is. He's still humble. He's still in shame. Amen. He's still praying to me. It's like God says, I can't help but to bless him. Here, boy, take a blessing. All right? Take a blessing. Behold, Hushai. You know what I'm saying? And point one, y'all, is kind of just a, a refresher of some things that we already know. All right? And so let's look at it. You know, when... The praises go up, the blessings come down. And that's behold Hushai. Because after David prays, that praises God, that's when Hushai shows up. And we say, hallelujah, that as a cliche, but it's actually scripture. In Psalm 67, 5, the Bible says, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Verse 6 says, Hallelujah, a word that describes a, 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 a segment of time after we praise him, after we worship, the Bible says what? Then shall the earth do what? Yield. Yield what? Her increase. Then shall the earth yield crops, corn, wheat, food, watermelon, okra. The, word, the, the earth will give you what you want when God is giving, when you're giving God what he wants. Come on now. All right. So when the praises go up, the blessings come down. So the earth opens up when we praise. You know what I'm saying? Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our God, shall do what? Shall bless us. You see, not just your okra going to grow in your backyard. But every man of blessing going to come upon you if you will just praise the Lord. Can somebody give the Lord about 10 seconds of praise right now? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. You see, those that are standing up need something from God. Those that are standing up need a blessing. Some that sit down, y'all must not need nothing from God. Let's try that again. All right. All right. Let's praise him for a second. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, all right. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Every time we praise God, we deposit something in our account. And it's only when you deposit is when you're able to withdraw. Amen. So David was able to withdraw blessings because he had some praise up there. You got to praise and you got to worship God. I'm telling you, some of us just worship and praise in church. And you can't do that. You got to praise him by your lonesome sometimes. You got to be in that kitchen by yourself just singing unto God. You got to drive that car. You got to sing unto the Lord. You got to be, amen, in that office building. You got to just be singing to the Lord. You got to be walking down the street just singing to the Lord, just blessing his name. You know what I'm saying? Because praising that church is good, yeah. You know? But will you praise him when nobody watching you? Come on now. All right. So praise brought Hushai. But prayer brought Hushai as well. You see, in Matthew 7, 7, look what it says. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. Prayer is one of the greatest things that we can do. If you need something from daddy, ask daddy for it. Oh, God. I'm going to move quickly. You have not because you ask not. Now, when you get perennial in prayer, amen, prayer is going to be spontaneous for you. All right? They used to talk about Spurgeon and some of the old, amen, uh, preachers, preeminent preachers. Anything could happen and prayer would pop up. You see? You ask some people, did you pray about it? No, it's not that bad. Like it got to get bad for prayer to come out. My prayer for you, Philly, is that you get so spontaneous with prayer 
that I'm talking about the moment something don't go no way, your way, the moment you needed something, that prayer just, it just come out of your mouth. Amen. You know how, you know how curses used to come out your mouth? You didn't even have to think to curse. All right. As soon as you get angry, you just let one fly. All right. Now you're saved. You're born again. All right. So what need to come out now is not cursing. It's not explicatives. Amen. It's prayer that need to come out. It don't matter where you're at, what you're going through, amen. If you could learn, like the Bible said, that with all things in prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. And the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall guard your heart, your mind, your soul, and keep it in Christ Jesus. When you could just pray about all things, when you could pray without ceasing, Amen. You see, because not only praise deposits in your account, but prayer deposits in your account. Amen. All right. So you want to be praying incessantly. You want to be asking God incessantly because prayer, amen, is the is the transaction of heaven. All right. You give prayer, you get from God. So if you stop praying, you stop getting. But what if you can continue to pray? That means that you're going to continue to get. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. All right. Just going through. David humbled himself. All right. Remember, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. All right. So that humility brought Hushai. Look at the shame. David operates in shame. We looked at this already. Isaiah 61, 7. For your shame, you shall have what? Double. All right, so shame. All right, David wept. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. The Bible says in the Psalms, though you sow in tears, yet ye shall reap in joy. All these things are deposits. All these things move God, and David knew it. I could have went on to my second point, but listen, some things need to be repeated. You got some things that need something from God, amen, and God needs something from you. And it's one of these five things, amen. And we look at people that's blessed and we say, man, how they could be that blessed? Maybe they doing something that you not doing. And God is no respecter of persons. If you will just do the right thing before your God, he's going to bless you like he blessed everybody else. Come on, give God some glory, amen. Yes, it was those five things that brought Hushai. Behold Hushai, all right? Husha was an answer to prayer, an answer to all of these graces. Amen. And so let's look at it. Second point, defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. All right. And so I'm going to just read a little bit. Y'all just follow with me. 33 and 34. Unto whom David said to Husha, if thou passes on with me, then thou shalt be a burden unto me. But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant, so will I now also be thy servant. Then mayest thou, hallelujah, for me, defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. So Hushai comes up to David. Just like Zadok, he wants to leave Jerusalem and be where David is. All right? He wants to go with David. In verse 33, David tells him plainly, you can't go with me. He says, if thou passest on with me, then thou shalt be a what? A burden unto me. Uh, Bible commentators and theologians believe that Hushai, amen, was up in age. All right. And so David is telling him on one thought, listen, you can't go with me because if we got to run from Absalom, you're going to be a burden to me. Uh, we, we can't run and climb mountains and be in the cave with your Husha. You're going to be a burden to me. All right. I'm going to have to stop and fight. We ain't going to better run like we need to run. All right. You're going to be like the one in the movie is always falling down, you know. <laughs> Secondly, commentators say, he say, Husha, you're going to be a burden to us. Because number two, Hushai wasn't a soldier. He was a counselor. He was an advisor. And David didn't need talkers at that moment. He didn't need counselors. He didn't need advisors. David needed soldiers. <laughs> 
David said, Hushai, you're up in age, and all you want to do is talk about stuff. <laughs> you're going to be a burden to me. I need some, some Joabs. You see what I'm saying? I, I need some Abishas. I, I need the soldiers with me. Anybody ever had a time when you need a certain type of man with you, a certain type of woman of God, which I, I need the soul, I need the warriors with me. Say, Hushai, you, you're going to be a burden to me. All right? You're good at some things, but you're not good at others. Hallelujah. And David was almost pastoring that. He was identifying what Hushai was good at and what he was not good at. And didn't want to put Hushai in a place where he, would not, would, where he wouldn't have been successful. He said, you would have been a burden unto me. But David remembered, y'all, that he had just prayed. He remembered that he had just asked God for something. All right? And a lot of us fall short at this. We pray, but we don't remember our prayers. I'm about to get in a whole nother area right here. A whole nother area. I ain't never taught it before. All right? He said, he say, you know, David remember that he had prayed. He had just prayed right before he worshiped. He said, Lord, he said, let the counsel of Ahithophel become what? Foolishness. That was his prayer. All right? But a lot of the times, most of us pray something then we forget what we prayed. And when the answer come, mm. we done prayed for something and the answer walk up, behold Husha. And we don't have the wherewithal to remember our prayer or to see that God has actually answered our prayer. Oh my God. You have no idea how many blessings you can miss by not doing what the Bible say we do when we are connected with prayer. There's always something in the Bible that's connected with prayer. When God tells us to pray, he always gives us another verb to go along with that verb pray. He always tells us to watch and pray. You can't just pray, you got to watch. You got to watch what to pray for, and then you got to watch as God answers your prayers. You... Oh, I'm getting excited up in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Husha was a counselor, an advisor. And David had just prayed God turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. If David would have been on a one-track mind, well, I only need warriors, I only need soldiers, he would have told Hushai, Hushai, go hide somewhere, we can't help you, my brother. He would have turned away his answer to prayer. How many people done did that before, man? Listen to me. Hushai is the one who God is going to use to turn Ahithophel's counsel into foolishness. That's why the Bible says when he walks up, it says, behold, Hushai. <laughs> it's a miracle. This is the answer to prayer. Now, now, answered prayer is a powerful thing. And I want to get deep into it in this second point. This is why we might not even go to the third point. I want to go deep into it. I want to talk about answered prayer. Answered prayer is a real thing. It's a very real thing. You know what I'm saying? And we must watch for answered prayer. You can't be like people who only want to pray. Right? You got some that just want to pray. They don't long for the, an for the answer. And that's not real prayer. The essence of prayer is going to God and asking for something that we need. But you got something that's not going to God for anything. For anything. They could even say, God, do this, but they don't really believe that he's going to do it. 
And after they pray in public and say these big eloquent words and quote a bunch of scriptures and make everybody feel like they some type of Pharisee, some type of theologian, amen, that's the reward that they wanted. Remember the Bible said you have your reward? But when they leave prayer, they don't look for answers. They don't look for no move of God. They're not expecting God to do anything. They treat prayer like we used to treat prayer when we used to pray to idols. We treat prayer like we pray into something that have eyes but see not ears, but hear not a mouth, but speak not hands, but can't move or do not. When you go to God and you don't understand the theology of answered prayer, you treat God like an idol, like he can't move. You do it out of religion. You do it, amen, out of uh, 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 tradition, but you're really not expecting nothing. And let me tell you something. This is the reason why a lot of people, their prayers, they don't get answered. Because they pray just to pray. They pray just to play. Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that what? He is. I ain't praying to no statue. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm communicating with somebody up there. He is. And guess what else? He is a rewarder of those who seek him. I know that I'm praying to somebody up there, Brandon. And not only am I praying to him, but me just coming to him, he is going to reward me. I can have an attitude of expectation. I can expect it. That's why in prayer, let me tell you, I get vexed in prayer sometimes. I ain't gonna lie. Because sometimes people just praying. You know? You're not really expecting God to do what you're asking him to do. You got to expect it. And if you don't expect it, don't pray it. Is that too rough? Let me pop. Come on, man. Come on. Because you're wasting time. You see? You see? Yeah. I have in my notes, to be honest, some don't want an answer. They just want to be heard. Let's talk about answered prayer, saints. Answered prayer is so powerful. Ian Bounds devotes, as though it were, three or four chapters just to answered prayer. Just to when God answers your prayer and how you're supposed to walk in and move into prayer. All right? Let me tell you why answered prayer is so powerful. Number one, all right, it shows that our God is real. That's why it's so important. When, when somebody watching you pray, just imagine an unbeliever watch you pray for something. And there you go, you, you, God, this is what I need. And you walk away, but you walk away believing and expecting. That lost person that know, don't know God, they're not really a believer. When they see that blessing come into being, when they see that house show up, when they see that car show up, when they see that spouse show up, when they see that child heal, when they see you come out that hospital, when they see that check in the mail, when they see that hey, you make your mortgage pay, when they see that, woo! It tell the lost man that God is real. You understand what I'm saying? It's kind of like if I'm on the phone. And I'm talking to somebody, but you don't know who I'm talking to. And you could say, oh, he's just pretending. But I'm on the phone with G-Money. I'm like, G-Money, bring them basketball shoes because when, when, we go and play Jaders. Them. Bring them good shoes, man. <laughs> Kenneth them and Jaders. Them. You, you, you might be looking, you say, oh, he pretending. He ain't talking to nobody. But what about when the shoes show up? <laughs> You're going to say not only was he talking, but somebody was on the other line listening to what? Answered prayer is powerful. 
It's a testimony that our God is real. It's proof that he exists. It's evidence that there is a God up there. That he lives, he loves, he's intelligent, and he cares about his people. They could bring all kind of statistics and evidence and all kind of uh, uh, false theories appearing real they want. But one thing they can't tell me is that my Redeemer don't live because when I, hey, when I ask for something, he delivers. I'm talking about answered prayer. Don't you dare be a prayer warrior that don't expect an answer. You're shortchanging God. You're shortchanging him. You say it, and you expect it. And I don't care who watching. You step out on faith with God. You don't be like one of those, well, I'm shame. I ain't going to pray it out loud because they might not. Uh-uh, uh-uh, that's, that's doubt. You have not because you ask not. And if you come here without faith, hey, God. You can prove that God is real right then and there. Let me give you a scripture. Let me, you don't believe me. Let me give you a scripture. Let me give you a scripture. 1 Kings 18.37. This is Elijah the prophet at Mount Carmel. Huh? Come on. Huh? Benny, yeah. Deacon, you know that story. It's when you got the, 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 the false prophets of Baal. And you got Elijah. And Elijah says, the God that answers. Mm. I'm not even going to get into the fire. The God that answers because the false gods can't answer. Minister, answer prayer is powerful because the God that answers, he is God. He is Lord. All right? Go to God expecting. Go to God believing. Go to God understanding that he's going to answer you. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. Secondly, I'm just going to roll. Answered prayer is important because it lets everyone know that we not only have a God, but he hears and answers his people. Oh, he hears and answers his people. And that is very important because you could have a God like Aristotle, the unmoved mover, a God who set things in motion but kind of backs away and let the law of the jungle, amen, prevail upon the earth. That's a false deity. That's not God. Our God is in the affairs of the people. Our God is waiting on us to move heaven and earth on our behalf. And so answered prayer lets us know not only that there is a God, but that he hears and he answers his people when they call. <laughs> Psalm 65, 2. Look what they call him. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Can you call that with him? with me right now can we call God that let's say oh thou, oh, thou that hear his prayer. prayer you can call him that yeah. when you get on your knees to pray call him that just that phrase alone is going to get his attention when you say that you are telling God God I know and I believe that you hear me when I cry that you hear my prayers oh God you are the God that hears prayer you, hey, listen a lot of people believe in a God but to believe in a God that hears, to believe in a God that sees, to believe in a God that feels the groans and the sighs of his people, that's a totally different thing. And answer prayer proves that. When David prayed, hallelujah, and Hushai showed up, it told everybody God is real. When Hushai showed up, it told everybody God hears. All right? Number three, answered prayer verifies who Jesus is. Oh, yes. I got to just throw that one in there. You can't go nowhere without Jesus in the sermon. You can't preach nothing without the gospel. So listen to me good right here. Whenever you get an answer to prayer, it shows that Jesus is who he says he is. All right. You can call him Jesus, Yahshua, Jesus. Call him what you want. Let's agree that we're talking about the same person. The one who died on the cross, rose on the third day. The one who seated at the right hand of the Father. He coming back again to make, hallelujah, his enemies. Hey, God. Hallelujah, his footstool. Listen to me good. Answered prayer verifies who Jesus is. How you know, Pastor? In John 16, 23, Jesus says, And in that day you shall ask me nothing. 
Verily, verily, truly, truly, for sure, for sure, I say unto you, whatsoever you ask the Father in what? In my name, he will give it to you. All right? How many people ever prayed something in Jesus' name before? All right? How many people ever got what they prayed for when they prayed in Jesus' name? Do you know what that answered prayer says? It says that Jesus is not just a man. It says that he's not just a prophet. It says that Jesus is everything he said he is and was. It means that he is the son of God, the second person of the Godhead. It means that he is the incarnate word become flesh. It means that he did die on that cross, was buried, and rose up on the third day. It means when you pray in Jesus' name and receive what you prayed for, it means our Redeemer lives. And he... How powerful answer prayer is that in Jesus name and when he delivers it it's oh God is the stamp of approval because I'm telling you you can't say in Omar name and something happened you can't say in Michelle name Chantel name you can't say that all right but when you say in Jesus name when you say that in devils run hmm. when you say that in sickness is healed when you say that in provision, come in. Huh? In Jesus' name? Like Sunday, when you say that and lights come on in Jesus. And, and, and Jesus. When, what does that say about Jesus? A hundred percent. A hundred percent God. A hundred percent man. hundred percent our Savior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Answered prayer is on a whole nother level, saints. Don't you just come around here praying just to pray? You expect God to move, and when he moves, amen, it's going to prove some things about him. It's going to prove that he's real. It's going to prove, amen, that he's living and loving and caring and answers his people. It's also going to prove, amen, the veracity of who Jesus is. You see what I'm saying? There's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To me and my spirit, answered prayer proves whether you're saved or not. Yeah, 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 I got to go there. I got to go there. All right? All right? Because even the prayer of the wicked is an abomination unto God. All right? All right? And when you saved, amen, God hears his children. We got some that get no answers. And you get no answers because you're walkie-talkie broken. You get no answers, amen, because the, the line of communication is cut off. All right? All right? You don't have the Holy Ghost yet. You're not born again yet. You don't have a new heart yet. You can only talk to God who's a spirit when you got the spirit of God living in you. You know what I'm saying? All right? You got to have two walkie-talkies that's on the same frequency to talk. And my heart is a walkie-talkie. And God, who's a spirit up there, he got one. All right? And when I'm saved, my, his spirit is in me. We on the same frequency. We on the same frequency. We on the same wavelength. For the natural man receiveth not the things that be of God, they foolishness unto him. Hey, but the, man, the spiritual man, the one that's saved. We can hear, we can see, we can receive the wisdom of God. We're on the same frequency. And so I say, hallelujah, break a break of God, you up there? 10-4, son, I'm up here. All right? But if I don't have his spirit, if I'm not saved, if I'm not born again, it won't be no communication. All right? Some of y'all got a communication break. All right? You, you get everybody else to pray for you because you don't have faith in your own prayers. Because you don't see a return when you pray. All right? Listen, the first place to check in that is if your equipment, amen, if you have the right equipment. All right? And that's simple, saints. That's simple. You believe in Jesus Christ. That he died on the cross for your sins. That he, that he was buried in the grave. That he rose on the third day. And you ask the Lord to save you. The Bible says, amen, that as many as receive him gave he the power mm, to become the sons and the daughters of God. 
He gonna put that equipment into you. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gotta pay nothing for it. Amen. You just gotta ask him to be a part of the team, and he's gonna send you the equipment. Hallelujah, free. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? And now you all hooked up. And you can go, Father, you hear me? Yes, I do, son. Go ahead. And you can pray like Matthew 7, 9. What man is there of you whom if his son asks for bread will give him a stone? You see, you see when you walkie-talkie work, when you ask for bread, mm, Father God ain't going to give you a stone. Oh, God, have mercy. I'm, you see what I'm saying? Answered prayer proves that you're a son. That you're a daughter. All right? If he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him. But you got to make sure that he's your Father tonight. You got to be saved. You see? You got to be saved. Answered prayer proves whether you're saved or not. I'm not done with you yet, saints. Answered prayer also shows us, even if we say, it shows whether we have a good connection with God. Right? Meaning that you could have the same equipment, but sometimes the connection can be bad. Maybe you're not taking care of your equipment like you should. Maybe you dropped it in water. Maybe you got yourself in a situation under a metal roof or around many obstacles and, and landscapes, amen, and you can't communicate with heaven because of all the things you've placed in front. Oh, God have mercy. I'm, I'm trying to preach up in here. So you could be saved and not get answers. God bless the truth. Like other children of God. And what is the problem with that? You have a connection problem. You had the equipment right. But you're not spending no time with God. You're not taking care of your equipment. You see, the Bible says it like this. The Bible says, amen, in, in, in John 15, 7, if you abide in me, hey, God, and my words abide in you, then ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, let's break that down for a second, Madison. All right, we say we got the right equipment. All right, but there's another level of prayer being answered. All right, all right, you got the regular Christian, amen, he get prayer answered every now and then, but then you got the one that really spend time with God. If you abide in me, they in prayer, they wake up, they spend time with God. Whether it's in the morning or in the night, or, but they're spending time with the Most High. And they're not only spending time with him in prayer, amen, and my words abide in you. They're not only in the presence of God, but they're in the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. He meditating in the word, thee, though, day and night. You know what I'm saying? Then shall ye be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in its due season. So you abiding in the vine. You abiding in prayer. You abiding in the word if you abide in me. And my words abide in you. Then you shall ask what you will, and it shall be given. It's kind of like two people got some equipment. One don't abide and take care of the equipment, and when they get in to talk to God, it's nothing but, yeah, God, I mean, I mean yeah, I can't, I, God, I can't hear you. God. <laughs> but then the other one is so fresh in the presence of God, praying every day, in the word every day. That equipment is well taken care of. There's no distortion, no nothing. They get on the line with God. They say, Father. The Father said, yes, son. Can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. In fact, I just was on the line with you a couple of minutes ago. Do you need anything else from me? You know what I'm saying? They always in that presence. You see? Answered prayer shows whether your connection is good or not. You see? Listen to me good. Let me challenge you. If you're not getting from God what you want as speedily and readily like you know it could happen, all right, check your relationship. Check your relationship. Have you been spending time with him? Have you been in that word? Have you been in prayer? Have you been at church like you should? 
Have you been putting in some extra hours for Bible study? When you're free, do you come to noonday prayer? All of those things accentuate the connection. The connection. The connection. Vinny feeling me, right? You know how connection is important. When you got a bad connection, power don't flow. Woo! Hallelujah! All right, so answered prayer is very important. Amen? Get connected, saints. Here's another one, amen, and we're going to spend a little time on it, saints, because I think it's of utmost importance as well, all right? You can tell who God has sent by answered prayer. Yeah, yeah. You can tell who God has sent through answered prayer, all right? All right? Now, let me give you the scripture. Let me give you the scripture. I don't want you to think I'm making anything up. John chapter 11, verse 41. You know it very well. It's when Jesus comes to the tomb of Lazarus. All right? And he tells them, roll away the stone. They say, Lord, it's been four days. By now, he what? He's stinking. All right? He said, go ahead, roll it. Roll it. The Bible says in 41, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes in prayer and he said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And in the NLT, in the New Translations, even in the Greek, I thank you that you always hear me. All right? It's not a question. I'm connected, Jesus is saying. But look at 42. And I knew that thou hearest me always. Here it is. Yeah, that's, that's where it's at. But because of the people which stand by, I said it. That they may believe that thou hast sent me. Did you catch that? Jesus is saying, I could raise him up anytime I want. But I'm going to stand out here in front of this thing. And I'm going to talk to the father. And I'm saying, father... I thank you, you always hear me, but, I, but I'm doing this for the people that stand around looking. I want them to know that you hear me and I hear you so that they could know that I am sick. Hey, I think prophet got it. You see, because when somebody is sick from the father, the father is going to hear them and you will see answered prayer come down. It was the case in, the, in our Lord. Our Lord was always on him, always telling him, look at the works that I'm doing. Look at what the Father's doing through me. Look what's happening. You're going to know I'm connected with him. Even the blind man, when he had, listen, this ain't never been done. You know? You know? Hey, God. Hey, God. Look, 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 look. Let me give you another. Let me give you another. 1 Kings 17 and 24. We're talking about answered prayer and we're going deep into it. And the woman said to Elijah, this is Elijah and the widow, her son dies. Elijah go up there, he healed the boy, stretch himself out on the board, anointing, hey God, it's transferable, just like the, hallelujah, woman touched the hem of his garment, amen. Power flows. And the little boy got up and was healed. Watch this now. And the woman said to Elijah, now by this, <laughs> by what? By what? By the miracle. By the answer to your prayer, by how Father God moved on your behalf, by how my child was dead, now my child is alive. Now by this, I know that thou art a man of God. Because before I didn't know. Hey! Because anybody can talk the talk. Anybody can quote some scriptures. Anybody can dress the part. Anybody can do that. But there's certain things that allow you to know. Thank you, my wife. I'm, I'm, there's certain things that's going to allow you to know when you're in the presence of somebody that's sick. There's certain things, all right? She said, by this, 
I know that thou art a man of God. And what? And that the word of the Lord is in thy mouth is true. She said, that's how I know. I got the confirmation. I watch Father God answer you. You know what I'm saying? And work a miracle. You know? Look what Jesus say in John 10, 38. Y'all still up out there? Come on, now, I'm not boring y'all, huh? We talking about answered prayer. Trying to encourage you, amen, to, 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 to pray and to pray in faith, amen, to expect God to move. And as you expect God to move, it's going to prove so much about God. It's going to prove so much about you and who you are, amen, hallelujah. And it is going to be inconclusive, it's going to be evidence, amen, that, that they can't argue about, all right? So you want to tap into that. Hey, God, but abiding and being in your word and praying is going to be very important to that. Having faith and expecting and longing for answers is going to be very important to that. David prayed, and behold, Hushai showed up. You see? Jesus says this in John 10, 31. If I do not the works of my father, if I don't do the works of my father, Jesus said, he said, believe me not. Because if the Father not answering me and working power through me, don't believe me, Jesus said. Don't believe me. But if I do, though you believe me not, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. You see what Jesus is saying? Jesus just cutting it. He just couldn't, it, he just couldn't it play because Jesus knew that he had haters. And he said, look, look, haters going to be haters. And I know some of y'all don't believe me, Jesus saying. He said, but if I'm not doing the works of the Father, then look, keep on hating and keep on. But if I'm doing the works, even though you don't like me, Jesus is saying, you better respect the work and the power of God that's flowing. You better. Now let me bring this to Philly. I know that some of you might be a little bit hesitant about me preaching the truth that we the Hebrews and people of the book. I know that. I know you might feel a little uneasy about the direction we're going. Even though you ain't never pastor the church. <laughs> ain't in no position to talk about which direction we should be going. However, I'm going to respect your mind. Let me respect your mind. I'm going to respect your mind. Let's just say you did know what you was talking about. All right? I want you to look at the work's sake. Just like Jesus said, he said, hey, I do not, if I do not the works of the Father, believe me not. If God ain't moving in this place, you ain't got to believe a word I'm saying. <laughs> Thank you, T. John. Thank you, T. John. Thank you, T. John. If God ain't moving in this place, you ain't got to believe a word I'm saying. You see what I'm saying? But the fact that some of y'all still here, you know that God is here. You know that God is here. Some be pulling you out, you're like, but this is going to be my last Tuesday. This is going to be my last Tuesday. But you know that God is here, so it just, I just. You see what I'm saying? You'll be able to see who God with. And who God has sent by answered prayer. Let's do a recap, Brent. We prayed for a thousand strong. Has he answered that? Oh! When there was no way legally possible for us to get this building, we still prayed for it. Did he answer that?
I had two daughters. <laughs> I had two daughters. Come on, mom. Come here. Come by daddy. 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 Hey. I had two daughters, brother Curtis. Two daughters. You understand what I'm saying? Got up here, prayed before everybody. What he did, brother Doug? He put the thumbs up and everything is all right, daddy. Everything is all right, daddy. Mwah. Mwah. Now, I'm trying to kiss him on the cheek. He's going to turn his face toward me. Listen. Did he answer that? All right. We had Easter service out here. They had 4K as rain. We prayed that it wouldn't rain. Everybody telling me, take the chairs in. Look, let's just, let's just. Did he answer that? We went out for the campaign. It didn't just rain. We had an epic historical no egg flood that week. And rain was still in the fall class. But we prayed for that Mud Street campaign. And we asked the Lord to hold up the rain. Did he answer that? Oh, God. I'm We prayed about our Hebrew people. And we asked God to take us national. <laughs> we asked him. We said, God, use us. I got up here for the anniversary and told you, we going national. And most of y'all was picking up y'all tables and cleaning up, but maybe y'all didn't hear but did he answer that? Yeah. The Negro Land Tour. Pastor called me out of nowhere. I want you on the ticket. Pastor Stephen Darby. We get off the bus, Brother Steve. <laughs> we get off the bus. Coming back from North Carolina. I get a call that all the lights off in church. They won't know what I want to do. What you mean what I want to do? <laughs> the building's still here, isn't it? <laughs> we got up, we prayed. We said, Lord, turn the lights back on. Did he answer it? And I'm answered prayer. Sure, come on, y'all be seated. Y'all gonna get me. Y'all gonna get me excited. Y'all be seated. Y'all be seated. <laughs> answered prayer shows a lot, saints. It shows a lot. It show who connected. It show who saved. It show who sent. Because there's going to be a lot of people that act like they sent. But Father ain't hearing them. Father ain't moving for them. Father ain't like with Moses splitting seas for them raining bread. Ain't nothing going on really in their life. Ain't, ain't nothing going on. He ain't moving nothing. Answer prayer going to show you who sent. Now, let me tell you something else about that. There are some who even they see the answers. Even though they see the answers. Even though they watch God move on behalf of man or God or church. Even though they watch Father God split heaven and earth wide open and do things that's not naturally supposed to occur. There will be some who will still 
not believe and will still resist the man of God, still resist the movement of God. Jesus said it like this in Luke 16, 31. It's when the man, he was in hell because that's where you end up when you don't receive when Father God doing something. And they talking to the man that's in hell. And he told Abraham, Abraham, send, send Lazarus back. Send the poor man back. Send him back that he might go and tell my brothers. I got family on the other side. And he said, nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses, if they hear not the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Because mm. it's not an issue of faith, no. It's an issue of the will. It's an issue of the heart. I don't want to believe. I don't like him. I don't like her. I don't like the church. I don't like what God is doing. I don't like God. I don't like Jesus. It's an evil heart of unbelief. It's what we would call the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit because when the Holy Spirit is moving, you refuse to be moved by the power of God. Calling what God is doing a work of the devil. That's the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And that's the unpardonable and that's the unforgivable sin. And that's the sin that people going to have on them when they bust hell wide open. That God would come down and show you signs and wonders, Hebrews. And because of an evil heart of unbelief. Do you remember what happened to the last group of us that did not walk with Moses? You remember they perished in that wilderness? It don't matter what they see, some of them. They will not believe. I'm begging you here, Philly. Whether you're in this church, no matter what church you go to, when you see answered prayer, and of course you want the corresponding fruit to go with it, of course. That goes without saying. You know your Bible. But when you see answered prayer, you better respect game, baby. Oh. Yeah. We're not going to go to point three. That my voice has lasted this long has truly been a miracle within itself. All right? But listen to me. For those who would say, Pastor, it's been cement on the ceilings. My prayers can't get through. I can't hear God. And it don't feel like he can hear me. I want to deal with you in the most loving way I can. You got to check and see if you've really accepted him as your Lord and Savior. If you haven't, just humble yourself. And tell God that you're a wretched rotten sinner you got to get to a place where you like Paul where you say he came to save sinners of whom I am chief you see as long as you think you better than somebody else you ain't ready yet you ain't ready yet you get to that place where you say listen I'm the dirtiest of dirty man and if he had to come down right now and, 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 and send me straight to hell, I would deserve what he gave me. That's the, that's the 
admission that we're looking for. It's not just this cold thing, I'm a sinner. Nah, I'm wretched. That saved a wretch like me. It's an admission of complete and utter desperation. Of God, if you don't save, then ha, I'm doomed. I, I, there's nowhere else to go. I have no other option but you. There is no savior but you, and I'm lost. I'm blind. That's the admission. That's the admission. And when God sees that, the Bible tells us y'all are broken in a contrite heart. He could not despise. He can't reject that. You get his attention, huh? Who done humbled themselves like that? Then he gonna show you the cross. He gonna say, yeah, you wretched. But I died for all your wretchedness. Yeah, you're dirty. But I opened up a fountain at Calvary. A fountain. That you can come get cleaned in. Washed in Emmanuel's blood. He's going to show you the cross. He's going to say come to the fountain. Come to the fountain. And be made clean. And all he requests of us is belief and faith. That he died, rose. And that he's coming back again. And with that admission and that belief, you cry out to God and open in your mouth, you say, Lord, save me a sinner. You see? But with the heart, we believe. Believe unto righteousness. With the mouth, we confess unto salvation. You got to ask him. You got to ask him. Salvation is as close as... That's your lips tonight. You got to ask him. Sometimes when we praying, some of y'all sitting in here playing on your phone, not talking. <laughs> it's on your lips. We saying and the people getting saved next to you got your mouth closed. How in the world that's going to be you bust hell wide open and the devil put on the screen. Look how close you was to salvation. The person next to you was saying it and you were sitting on there. Snapchatting. We're going to pray tonight. You're going to be saved tonight. You're going to enter into a relationship with God whereby he's going to start blessing you like a son and like a daughter. That's what we're going to do tonight. And for the Christians who hear that hallelujah might have a little problem with their connection not abiding like they should not getting in the word like they should maybe sin and got and got in and crossed up the wires hey god we're gonna bring you to the technician tonight we're gonna take the wires and clean them off and take the solder and iron we're gonna get that communication that line back right so once again in your life you're gonna have jacob's ladders and angels ascending and descending Going up with prayers and coming down with blessings. Up with prayers, down with blessings. And then there's another group. <laughs> A group of unbelieving believers. Who fight their leaders tooth and nail. Even though they see the hand of God with them. You're going to come and you're going to repent. I'm going to say you're sorry. You're not going to be like Janice and Jambres, like Korah, the people who resisted Moses. You're not going to be like that. You're better than that. You're better than that. And I'm expecting better things from you. Those that want to go, let them go. Let them go. <laughs> let them go. You got to make up your own mind and, and see what you see. And thrive where you're planted. 
Come to the altar with your past. Come to the altar with your past. Come on. I done poured out my heart. Come to the altar with your past. Rally around me. Rally around me. Come on. Let's come to the altar as one people. With one voice. With one love. With one prayer. I know in this house, everything won't be perfect. We're going to offend each other. Things going to happen wrong. I understand all of that. But don't lose sight of God in the midst of it all. Watch for him, D. Amen. And when you stop seeing him, then it's time to go. But as long as he is here, then we are here. Amen. All right? Because if he leave this place, you ain't going to be the only one to leave. I'm leaving too. Because I want to be where he is. Right? All right, here we go. Somebody say, Father. Father. Abba. Abba. Yahweh. Yahweh. I admit. I admit. I'm wretched without you. I'm a, I'm a sinner. My thoughts, my, thoughts, my, actions, my actions, my heart, my heart is, dirty is dirty without you. I need you. I need you. Can't do it without you. Please help me. I believe in you, Jesus. Yeshua, you, you died for my sins. You were buried in that grave, and you rose on the third day. I believe it with all my heart. Now, Lord, forgive me, cleanse me. Save me. Save me. Use me. Use me. Fill, me. Fill me. Empower me. I don't want to be a burden to your kingdom. I want to be a blessing. Help me to get under. Help me to get under. The people, the people you're using. Help me to get under. Help me to be in order. Open my eyes so I can see who. You are with. Please forgive me for rebellion, for stubbornness, for witchcraft, for idolatry. Forgive me, Lord, for gossip, for slander, for lying. For backstabbing. for backstabbing. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. For, hurting for hurting the people, the people you, sent you sent to help me. To help me. Jesus mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give God some glory.
Come on, give him some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, son. We're going to walk out of here. Listen, Philly. I love y'all. Love y'all. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. <laughs> be gracious to you. And may he bless you with peace, with shalom. You're going to do great things, you and your seed. You're going to be blessed above all the people in the earth. You're going to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You are the lenders and not the borrowers. <laughs> Love y'all saints. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be blessed. Be blessed.